So in the in the topic of resilience, um, like coming back to the Fulbright applicants, do you have any story? You know, you like I said, you go through thousands of applications, whether it's U grad or um, Fulbright or even other scholarships that USCFP offers. Do you have a particular example of resilience in mind that you know you think that students or people who are applying should know about just to encourage them as well? Well, yes, uh, a very interesting story uh, that in twenty. 21, I believe, 20 or 2021, somewhere uh, about, uh, an uh, applicant was selected, shortlisted, selected everywhere. And at the time of uh, pre-departure orientation, although it was in our database, we saw that uh, we were just going through the process and he, he got selected. And then we asked him, there is a pre-departure orientation we yeah. always do for the outgoing group. And we asked him, uh, in fact, personally, I asked him to come on stage and share his story. So... He was selected seventh time. So he didn't lose his heart. He kept trying. That was his seventh time that he applied for the Fulbright program. And finally, he got selected. After the seventh time. After the seventh time. And now now he's back. He's one of our alumni. And he's working here in Pakistan. And that was, that was the, in even all of us, we, we were... We were surprised. We were amazed that oh my God, this this kind of resilience <laughs> that we we want in our full writers. Exactly. So it was his seventh time, and he got selected finally. So he didn't get demotivated through the rejection. Not at all. In fact, that's what I always say to our uh, candidates that there is a fifty percent chance that you get selected on your first attempt. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, fifty percent or more than fifty percent people get selected second or third time. Yeah. So, that's, so people should keep that in mind, you know. Uh, then again, the Fulbright Scholarship isn't going anywhere. You don't get selected. You don't need to think that once you don't, don't, don't get selected, that, that I'm not good enough. Yes. No, that's not the case. Uh, maybe this time the competition was, it was maybe more competitive. Maybe the priority field was different. Yeah. Maybe there was a human factor. Maybe in yeah. the review process, whatever it is, yeah. just try to, yeah. uh, if your GRE scores are good enough and you think that they are competitive, then try to work on your application because obviously when then in next year you'll apply. Uh, there's a difference in your experience as well. Yeah. There must be something that you've been doing during the, yeah. the whole year. Yeah. Exactly. So just add those in your application, yes. redo it, and send it so exactly, the year isn't wasted technically. The best you can do is enhance your application by working in that year and making yourself more dynamic than you and are. And GR is also valid for five years. If exactly. it's good, it's competitive, then at least you can send your application for five more years with the yes, same GR score. With the same GR score, mm. <laughs> exactly. But that is a good message. I think people should know about this because people do get disheartened. I think it's just a human factor to get disheartened upon rejection. But, you know, it's your resilience that you, despite being rejected maybe for the scholarship of your dream, you can still mm. apply again. Mm. You can still make yourself better um, and come back stronger. And I think everybody should know about that. But, you know, we've talked about resilience. Let's talk. come to the lighter side of things. You've been sat in interviews, probably mm. numerous of them. You've probably screened applications. Any particular funny story that you have from, without naming anybody, obviously, any interesting stories that you have from the, because you've had a vast array of experience from, you know, serious situations. I don't know whether with. this story is an interesting one, but uh, shocking, definitely right. shocking for me. Uh, I don't want to name any any program or any, anything, uh, yeah. but there was an interview going on. I was sitting in that interview and then there was a candidate a few, few years back, yeah. maybe Eight, ten years back, I, I was interview. Interview was going fine, were very well. It was a, a, during the first five or six minutes, everybody, everybody thought that, oh, okay, that this applicant is going to be selected, yeah. a star applicant yeah. or whatever. Everything was going. It was just one question. A panel member asked that uh, applicant, and just suddenly, that applicant reacted. Right. To the to the towards the panel member, and said that I don't think you are qualified enough to know oh, what what wow. I'm going to study. And oh my God! And then I was like, Oh, oh. oh no! That is one of the biggest. And all all the panel panel members uh, just just looked at each other's face, and then then the interview continued. And yeah, but I think that one nobody remark nobody, was nobody said it. anything. Then interview uh, went uh, went on, and then. After the interview, uh, I don't I don't need to say that what was the reaction and what was the grade and everybody. Exactly. So 
people people do uh, such kind of yeah. things people do there are always so so on so many occasions we find st- applicants very strong that's why uh, on the application on the paper yeah. that's why they have been shortlisted for the interview yeah. but during the interview they don't prove mm-hmm. that good enough to make it the final cut and sometimes it's just vice versa opposite to that people are just barely made it to the uh, interview stage but their interview went very well and they they got a a plus